About to start! j i r a m i l i s Reading Time presents The Hare and the Turtle. Once upon a time, there was Alice, Turtle, and Babs Hare. They were playing in the woods when Babs started making jokes about Alice's sluggishness. One fine day, Alice the Turtle was already very tired of Babs' games. She then decided to challenge Babs to a great race. Babs' hair, very sure of herself, readily accepted. All animals in the forest were invited to watch this great contest. At the start, the turtle Alice left without wasting time, without haste, walking with her little steps, slow but steady. Soon the hair Babs saw the scene, chuckled, and easily overtook Alice. Knowing that she would win easily, She decided to take a nice nap. When she woke up, she saw that the turtle Alice had passed in front of her and was almost winning. So she started to run and run, but she saw her partner crossing the finish line and everyone around her started to cheer. The end. Every street were mine. I would order, I would order to be tiled with pebbles, with precious diamond pebbles, just to see, see my darling passing by. On this street, on this street, there is a forest, and it's called, and it's called l i l y b e r s t 
To start, yeah! Jiramili's reading time presents the ugly duckling. Once upon a time, there was a mother duck who laid five little eggs. She eagerly waited the arrival of her chicks. One day, those little eggs started cracking, then breaking, and then moving. Mommy duck was so happy that her beautiful ducklings were being born. That's when Jim, Ben. Fred and Mel were born, all yellow and orange beaked. But the last chick couldn't get out. Suddenly, the shell of the last egg broke, and to the surprise of the mother duck, Theo was born. But he was very different from his brothers. He was gray in color and had a black beak. The mother duck then said, My God! But this duckling is very ugly. The days passed, and all of the chicks grew into beautiful ducklings. But Theo grew up different from the others, and earned a nickname from his brothers, the Ugly Duckling. Everyone laughed and made fun of his appearance. It was then that, crying and feeling excluded from his brothers, Theo. The ugly duckling decided to leave. Even far away, the duckling had no peace, because wherever he went, his brothers followed him and shouted, "You are very odd and ugly!" Wherever Theo went, everyone made fun of him, and he felt increasingly sad and abandoned. The duck continued on his way, and when he got close to a big lake, he decided to stay for a few days, and soon. Some birds that Theo didn't know started to arrive. There were swans approaching the ugly duckling. As he looked around, more and more swans appeared, and Theo was very charmed and felt welcomed by these new friends. He discovered, by his reflection in the water, that he was also one of these birds that he so admired. The group of swans immediately welcomed him, and the duckling, who had been humiliated before. Had found the company of brothers of the same species, leaving his heart full of happiness. The end. Flies by, he flaps his wings. 
flies by. My little yellow chick fits right here in my hand. In my hand. And whenever he gets hungry to look for bugs, he scratches the ground. My little yellow chick fits right here in my hand. In my hand. And whenever he gets hungry to look for bugs, he scratches the ground. His wings, he says, beep, beep. but he runs and hides when an eagle flies by. He flaps his wings, he says, beep, beep. but he runs and hides when an eagle flies by. He flaps his wings, he says, beep, beep. but he runs and hides when an eagle flies by. He flaps his wings, he says, beep, beep. but he runs and hides when an eagle flies by. Let's read a story! Yeah! Reading time is about to start! Yeah! Jiramili's Reading Time presents The Cicada and the Ant Once upon a time, a cicada that was always hopping about and singing without a worry in life suddenly found an ant on the path that was carrying a leaf and asked Hello, friend ant! Why all this work? Summer will soon arrive and we have to take the opportunity to rest, sunbathe, and have fun. No, 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 friend Cicada. We ants don't have time for fun. We have to work now to save food for the winter. Summer arrived, and the Cicada continued to enjoy life, humming without a worry. And when he felt hungry, he would only take a leaf to eat. One day in the sun, an ant passed by his side carrying a leaf. The cicada then said, Friend, leave this leaf for your colleagues to carry. You don't need to have this job. Let's enjoy this beautiful day. The little ant accepted the idea and decided to leave it to his colleagues to carry leaves to the ant hill and decided that he would take this opportunity to have fun instead. One day, the queen of the ant hill, seeing the cicada and the ant singing and dancing, went to them with an angry face and ordered the ant to go back to work. The queen then spoke to Cicada. If you don't change this lifestyle, when winter comes, you regret it. You'll be hungry and cold. The Cicada didn't even care. He looked the queen in the eye and said, Winter is still far away. In the meantime, I want to enjoy the sun. All the Cicada wanted was just to enjoy life without thinking about the future. Why would I build a house? Why would I save food? What nonsense! I don't need it! With the arrival of winter, the cicada began to feel cold and began to feel hungry too. Then, he remembered what the Queen of Ants had said about saving food and building a house. He got desperate and ran to the ant's house to ask for help. When opening the door, the ant looked at the cicada, who was shivering with cold, and took him inside the house. Then, he placed him by the fire and gave him a hot cup of tea. The cicada then looked at the ant and thanked him. At the same time, the queen of the ant hill appeared and then said to cicada, Here, in the ant kingdom, Everyone must work. If you want to stay with us this winter, you must do what you know best. Sing and dance for us. For the cicada and the ants, that winter was the happiest winter of their lives. The end. The sun has appeared, it's time to wake up now. Stretch those arms, let's get out of our beds. And foot after the other, walk, walk, walk. Brush your teeth well, up and down again Turn on the tap, now and wash that pretty face Now you really woke up, rinse and rinse and rinse it All the day is about to begin What will we have for breakfast today? Will it be a banana or will it be an apple? Will we have some milk today or just pineapple juice? I hope we have some sandwiches, yummy Good morning, Mom and Dad. Good morning, everyone. Be nice.
Let's rest and dream tonight so our tomorrow can be good. I hope you have a good night. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Cause the night is just, just about to start. Let's read a story. Yeah! Reading time is about to start. Yeah! Jiramili's Reading Time presents Beauty and the Beast There was once a beautiful prince who lived in a huge castle But the young man was very selfish and didn't like anyone He didn't have any family or friends One very cold winter night He received a visit from a little lady who asked for shelter Annoyed, he refused to help her Little did he know that she was a witch in disguise the witch was very upset with the prince, so she decided to cast a spell, transforming him into a monstrous beast. The spell could only be undone if he received a kiss from a true love. In a small town not far away, there lived a merchant with his only daughter, Belle. Because she was so beautiful, they called her Beauty. She was very fond of reading and telling stories to the children in the village. Her father made many trips because of his work. During a trip, he faced a rainy night and saw a castle in the distance and decided to go in to wait for the rain to pass. When the rain passed, he began to walk through the castle garden when he decided to pick all the flowers he could find to take to his daughter. He didn't know that whoever lived in the castle was actually a prince who had been turned into a beast. The beast? Realizing that a man had entered his castle, became enraged and went after the man and decided to capture him. Very sad and shaken, the father made a single request to the beast and asked if he could say goodbye to his daughter, and the beast accepted. Upon arriving at the castle, Belle rides in her father's saddle, and when she sees him sad and sick, she makes a request to the beast. Let my father go! and I will take his place, but with one condition. I want to live in a room and read good books. So, the beast accepted. Over time, the beautiful young beauty enchanted the creature, and it came to admire her more and more. And with that, the beast realized that inside that ugly monster, there was actually a kind creature who could treat her very well. One beautiful day, Belle was very sad and was not reading as usual, as she missed her father a lot. So, she asks the beast to let her visit him. Angrily, he immediately denies her request. But when he sees the young woman crying, he accepts. Belle quickly grabs one of the buggies and sets off on a trip to see her father. After a week, the young woman returns to the castle, and when she arrives, she doesn't find the beast. She despairs and then finds him in a corner, very sick and hurt. Immediately she starts taking care of him and realizes that she has fallen in love with him. She then decides to give the beast a kiss. With that, the monster starts to transform and transform. Suddenly, a beautiful prince appears, looks into her eyes and thanks her telling her that the spell was now broken. So then, they lived happily ever after the end. The canoe flames over because someone let it go It was Jim and Ellie's fault she didn't know how to row If I were a fishy and I knew I would save you and Mill from the bottom of the sea. The canoe flew over because someone let it go. It was Jim's fault because he didn't know how to row. If I were a fishy and I knew how to swim, I would save a little Jim from the bottom of the sea. Because someone let it go It was Trunks' fault because he did 
Everything's so fun, everyone is merry. Jeremy is pretty and she wants to marry. Everything's so fun, everyone is merry. Little boy is handsome and he wants to marry. Nakano flipped over because someone let it go. It was in the spot because she didn't know how to roll. If I were a fish and I knew how to swim, I would save little Nina from the bottom of the sea. The canoe flipped over because someone let it go. It was too And I knew how to swim I would save a little Tuku from the bottom of the sea The canoe flipped over Because someone let it go He was main fault Because he didn't know how to row If I were a fishy And I knew how to swim I would save a little main From the bottom of the sea The canoe flipped over Because someone let And I knew how to swim I would save a little boy From the bottom of the sea Everything's so fun Everyone is merry Jerome is pretty And she wants to marry Everything's so fun Everyone is merry Little boy is handsome And he wants to marry Let's read a story! Yeah! Reading time is about to start! Yeah! Jerome is reading time presents The Three Little Pigs once upon a time, there were three little pigs. The three little pigs lived together in the forest with their mother. The day after they grew up, they decided to build three houses, one for each brother. The mom was a little sad, but she ended up agreeing, and she always warned all of them. Be careful, be very careful. The forest is beautiful, but it is very dangerous too. In it, lives a very bad wolf. Yes, mommy, replied the three little pigs. Soon, the piggies started looking for a good place to build their houses. A few days later, they found the perfect spot. Oh, what a party! Each one started to make their own house with much joy and enthusiasm. The youngest pig ended up making his house too quickly because he wanted to play instead and only used straw in the construction. The middle pig, also eager to play, gathered just a few sticks and built a wooden house. The oldest pig, on the other hand, recalled mom's words. He remembered everything his mom used to say to them. He remembered the dangers of the forest and about the importance of doing everything the right way. He decided to build a great house, even if he didn't have that much time to play afterwards. Let's build a very safe brick house, said the oldest pig. His house took the longest to get ready, but in the end, it was the best house ever. He was very proud of his house, and after finishing it, he joined together with his brothers to play. After a while, the three little pigs were happily playing in the forest, when suddenly, the big bad wolf appeared. Look what I see in front of me! Three delicious pigs, said the big bad wolf. Upon seeing the big bad wolf, three little pigs quickly fled, taking cover in their homes. But the big bad wolf was very hungry. He walked up to the youngest pig's house and said, I smell a little pig. Come out of this house now. If you don't come out, I am going to tear down this straw house. Without pity, the big bad wolf blew so hard that it made the little house go up in the air. The youngest pig, very scared, ran to the house of the middle brother, who had made a little wooden house. This house is a little better than mine, he thought. When the wolf got there, he said again, I smell little pigs, I'm hungry, and I'll eat them both. Come out of this house now. If you don't come out, I'm going to tear down this wooden house. Without pity, the bad wolf blew twice and made the house go flying through the air. The two little pigs, frightened even more, ran to the older brother's house who had made an especially wolf-proof brick house. When the bad wolf saw that the three little pigs were all in one house, he got even more excited and said, I smell three little pigs 
I am so hungry that I'm going to eat all three at once. So this time, the big bad wolf filled his chest with air and blew as hard as he could. Then he blew again, pulling as much air as he could into his lungs and blew out. But the house was made of bricks and it didn't even move. Relieved, the three little pigs jumped up happily and hugged each other. But the wolf didn't give up so easily and said, Just wait for me. I couldn't tear down this brick house, couldn't open the door, but I have a better idea. Then, the big bad wolf started climbing the roof towards the chimney. The two youngest pigs were worried, but the oldest pig, who always listened to mom's advice, placed a fire under the chimney and then prepared a big cauldron of boiling water. The big bad wolf entering through the chimney fell into the cauldron of hot water and burned his tail. This time, the big bad wolf learned his lesson. Really scared, he fled as fast as he could into the center of the forest. The three little pigs celebrated merrily and hugged each other as much as they could. The two youngest pigs thanked their older brother immensely and they learned their lesson about the importance of always listening to mom and dad. And they also learned how to get things done right. The big bad wolf never returned to the three little pigs' house. The end. Time is about to start! Jiramili's yeah! Reading Time presents... The Hare and the Turtle Once upon a time, there was Alice, Turtle and Babs Hare. They were playing in the woods when Babs started making jokes about Alice's sluggishness. One fine day, Alice the Turtle was already very tired of Babs' games. She then decided to challenge Babs to a great race. Babs Hare very sure of herself, readily accepted. All animals in the forest were invited to watch this great contest. At the start, the turtle Alice left without wasting time, without haste, walking with her little steps, slow but steady. Soon the hare bed saw the scene, chuckled and easily overtook Alice. Knowing that she would win easily, she decided to take a nice nap. When she woke up, she saw that the turtle Alice had passed in front of her and was almost winning. So she started to run and run, but she saw her partner crossing the finish line and everyone around her started to cheer. The end. Die. 
story. Yay! Reading time is about to start. Jiramili's Reading Time presents The Cicada and the Ant. Once upon a time, a cicada that was always hopping about and singing without a worry in life suddenly found an ant on the path that was carrying a leaf and asked, Hello, friend ant. Why all this work? Summer will soon arrive and we have to take the opportunity to rest, sunbathe, and have fun. No, 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 friend Cicada. We ants don't have time for fun. We have to work now to save food for the winter. Summer arrived, and the Cicada continued to enjoy life, humming without a worry. And when he felt hungry, he would only take a leaf to eat. One day in the sun, an ant passed by his side carrying a leaf. The cicada then said, Friend, leave this leaf for your colleagues to carry. You don't need to have this job. Let's enjoy this beautiful day. The little ant accepted the idea and decided to leave it to his colleagues to carry leaves to the ant hill and decided that he would take this opportunity to have fun instead. One day, the queen of the ant hill, seeing the cicada and the ant singing and dancing, went to them with an angry face and ordered the ant to go back to work. The queen then spoke to Cicada. If you don't change this lifestyle, when winter comes you regret it. You'll be hungry and cold. The Cicada didn't even care. He looked the queen in the eye and said, Winter is still far away. In the meantime, I want to enjoy the sun. All the Cicada wanted was just to enjoy life without thinking about the future. Why would I build a house? Why would I save food? What nonsense! I don't need it! With the arrival of winter, the cicada began to feel cold and began to feel hungry too. Then, he remembered what the Queen of Ants had said about saving food and building a house. He got desperate and ran to the ant's house to ask for help. When opening the door, the ant looked at the cicada, who was shivering with cold, and took him inside the house. Then, he placed him by the fire and gave him a hot cup of tea. The cicada then looked at the ant and thanked him. At the same time, the queen of the ant hill appeared and then said to cicada, Here, in the ant kingdom, Everyone must work. If you want to stay with us this winter, you must do what you know best. Sing and dance for us. For the cicada and the ants, that winter was the happiest winter of their lives. The end. Hello, Jira Millie's friends. Subscribe now to our channel. Millie Millie Kisses for you.